Hey humans, check this out. Today on Exploring Limitations, I'm gonna show you how to get that gnarly bass tone and some thoughts about how to write a bass line. Here we go. Recently, I released a song featuring the drummer Nashon Seville called It Doesn't Need It. and a video talking about how we got that drum tone. Many of you in the comments section asked me straight up, yo, how'd you get that bass tone? Well, for one, thank you. That's very flattering because I am a bass player by profession. And number two, keep on the quest of dirty bass. First, I'm gonna show you how to get that gnarly tone itself. And then second, I'm gonna let you into my brain about how that bass line came to be. Let's first just listen to the soloed bass from the original track that is now released on Spotify and all the streaming platforms. Soloed bass. What are your first thoughts when you hear that bass soloed? I know what mine are. It's a hairy, dirty, hairy bass tone. How I got this bass tone? Well, the 30 second or less answer to that question is Active Electronics Music Man bass going into a JHS Pack Rat pedal, which is routed straight into the high Z input of the DBX163X compressor, over easy compression, and then I take the output of that, which was a line level signal, and I'm going into uh, one of the channels on the Tascam Porta 2 mixer. There, that's it, we're done. Video's done, I don't have to talk anymore. That's it, bye. No, I wouldn't leave you like that. If you only want simple answers, that's it, we're done. You can turn off the video, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about how I dialed in this pack rat, going into the compressor, why I went into the compressor, and then a little bit more about the baseline itself afterward. It's very simple. So step one is dialing in the pack rat. The JHS pack rat is a pedal that has nine, count them, nine, Proco Rat circuits built inside of it. I made a video on that a while back. You can check that out if you want to know more about the specifics of the pack rat. Usually when you think of a pack rat, or sorry, a rat pedal, you think of really, really, really aggressive distortion. Something like this. Clearly that's not what the bass line was. Reminder, this is the original bass line. My favorite a setting of the pack rat is brat. Check out my settings here. Volume, 100%. Distortion looks like it's all the way off and the filter is all the way counterclockwise. Right now the distortion is all the way counterclockwise. I nudged it just like mm, here, let's see. That's it, that's it. Big difference, right? Here, here's with it off. So you're getting that, that hairy by just dialing in the distortion just ever so slightly. The cool thing about the JHS Pack Rat is each mode, there's nine of them, offers a slightly different style of distortion. I mean, I could just play a couple of them real quick, but go watch the Pack Rat video for the full breakdown. <laughs> But I would be remiss to not mention the very important DBX163 compressor right after the Pack Rat. DBX made something that they call over easy compression. And the best of my understanding is that it's a type of compression that as the signal approaches the threshold, it's anticipating and starting to do some compressing before it gets there and after. Most compressors work only when the signal gets to the threshold. And the way my artistic brain interprets it, it's really good on bass and it's a nice soft compression. But it's still grabbing the signal and, and holding on to it. And you can, you can extend, you know, here's it all the way cranked. Good sustain. Let me uh, unplug it from the compressor so you can hear what it would sound like without the compression. Now here it is with compression. If 
finally, the last and most important part of the, your signal chain, and something that I use for this port of studio work all the time, is how I'm pushing the preamp and pushing the tape. Check out this VU meter. This is, this is where the bass is coming in. I make sure to get it close to the red, sometimes maybe even dipping into it. So check it out. So I'm, I'm hitting that preamp pretty hard. And this is the trim. I'll pull it all the way back down so you can hear it without. Obviously right now that's just a volume difference, but luckily for me, the same drum beat from the song is on a different part of this cassette. It was more of a rehearsal. And off camera, I recorded the bass line with the signal chain. So with the, the JHS into the compressor into here, and then without it, just the bass plugs straight in and I'll toggle back and forth between and show you which is which. That's the bass straight into the Tascam, pushing the preamp. Now that's with the signal chain. It's hairy, huh? I can add lows to the uh, to the hairy bass line. <laughs> so that should give you some context of how to get the sound of something like this. So again, to reiterate, it generally sounds good to push the preamp for recording bass, no matter what the ch signal chain is. So it still is a good tone for this piece of music to see, it felt like it needed something a little bit more aggressive. And that kind of brings me to artistic choices. Bass lines, how to make bass lines. Again, like I said in the video about these mono drums, we spent a couple of hours filling up a cassette with Nashon's drumming. So it was my job to make music around his drumming. And when I came upon this part of the cassette, it's groovy. Sometimes one of the best options is to leave space for the drums when they're doing kind of busy stuff. Because the reason I say that is because it's easy to get excited by the drummer, you know? You know, do you hear me playing all those ghost notes? You know, that kind of thing. That's not actually in the bass line. If I'm gonna solo the bass again along with the drums and you'll hear it's actually very simple. It's I'm not playing ghost notes. I'm doing it that very, very on purpose because you, well, you'll see, let, let me just play it for you. Hear that? No ghost notes. Even that kick drum, Nashawn is doing papa de pomp pomp, pa papa de pomp pomp. My bass line is just going ba di da da, da di da da. I'm leaving out an anticipated bass note. Hear that? So I'm letting his kick drum take that anticipation. Drum and bass to me are like the foundation of everything and the music, most music and the music that I really, really like. So there's a general rule of thumb. If the drums are playing a complicated part, eh, complicated, bass could be playing something simple. It's not always true, it's a rule of thumb, so break it. And vice versa, if the drums are playing something simple, a bass can rock out some crazier lines. You know, music is about tension and release, uh, uh, contrasts. It's always good to be thinking of those things in, in multiple ways. If you kind of keep that ethos in mind, it'll lead you to good places. The kid in me, the instinct is to like want to play. Yeah. 
you know, like propelling the rhythm along. Nashon is already doing that. And, and all those extra little ghosty notes for this particular song, believe me, I recorded it and I listened back and I was like, it doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need it. Does that all make sense? I could talk more about the bass line. If you're interested, we'll just have a discussion down in the comments section. Thanks again for asking those great questions. You can join me on Patreon and have direct access to me if you, if you care to help this channel grow and move along. I would be forever grateful. And of course, just watching and liking and subscribing and do all the, doing all those YouTube things is very, very much appreciated as well. This is a really cool little community we have growing here of uh, wild little tape nerds. So you guys are real smart in the comments. I've got great people, great conversations happening down there. I really, really appreciate it. I don't think I missed anything. So if I did, oops. And with that, as always, is peace and be good to each other. Ow. I deserve that. <laughs> Have you ever banged yourself in the head with the horn of your bass?